Welcome to Tactic Tuesday. So every Tuesday, I'm going to explain a little bit about the real estate market to you. So besides the normal fluff that everybody else does, the home inspections, like which we did last week, uh, buyer closing costs, all that good stuff, I'm going to focus on something that no one really tackles, and that's you guys, the buyers. So unless you have to be in a house, if you are a buyer that is taking your time buying a house, you have a house, you don't have to move out, landlord's not kicking you out, mom's not kicking you out, uh, but there is a future plan within the next, say, six months to two, three years that you're going to buy another house. This is um, who this video is going to be more directed to because at the end of the day, the appraiser doesn't determine what the market is. The seller doesn't determine what the market is. The buyers determine what the market is. Well, then you're probably saying, hey, Michael, why were we paying $100,000 over asking if we have control of the market? It's because you knuckleheads are getting tunnel vision and you are literally buying, impulse buying. So some people have to be in a house. Some people on a scale of one to 10, hey, that's my house, I want it, that's it. This video is not for you, okay? You bought because you needed to be in there. And I'm one of those people my, myself, I got lucky though. We were an impulse buyer two years ago. We were structuring it out. Uh, but at the end of the day, we got a forever house, but I did not pay 100000 over asking. I did not pay 50000 over asking. I actually paid asking price because of my negotiating skills, and I listened, and I didn't cave in. So the first thing we're going to tackle is, what is your deadline, or is there a deadline? You also have to find an experienced realtor. You two are going to team up, Okay. Your team is probably going to consist of about 10 people. You have your real estate agent. When you hire a real estate agent, my recommendation is not to go for the individual agent. These guys are busy, okay? They have probably about 5 to 10 listings. They probably have about 10 buyers. You want somebody like a team who is going to focus on your needs. So to give you an example, I have 10 people on my team right now. Just because you are my client does not mean that these guys can't help you, get you to where you need to be. So you need to create a team. So the first thing you want to do is inter um, interview a real estate team that is experienced in the area and the type of property that you're looking for. Well, type of property, Michael, what, just single houses? No, area. Uh, shore properties, Pocono properties. Is this going to be a step up house? Is this going to be a downsize? You want to make sure that your real estate team, your team, is familiar with the type of property that you're looking for. The next person you're going to add to your team is your financial person. Do I need one single person? Absolutely not. You can have as many as you want. Just don't have them run your credit left and right. Okay. What you're going to do is look for recommendations from either your family or the real estate team that you picked. Most likely, go with the... Um, a mortgage company that the real estate uh, team uh, uses only because if they have a good sized team, uh, most of their transactions are being handled by that one um, loan officer. Rule of thumb though, first, if you're um, not comfortable giving your information out, go to your bank. I prefer that to begin with anyway because that sets a baseline. If you go to your bank, whether it's a TD bank if they're still around, I can't remember who's in business, who's not in business, or a credit union. When you go and get your pre-approval, talk to your real estate agent first. You're gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need an address, you're gonna need taxes, and you're gonna need a zip code, okay? Give that to your loan officer and they'll be able to punch up a good faith estimate for you. The reason why you want the good faith estimate is because now the real estate team can put that in and qualify you on what type of property you're looking for. He's gonna let you know what your monthly payment's gonna be and what you're gonna need at the table. As long as those figures work out, then you're good to go. Let's go on to the next step. You also wanna stay active communi uh, in communication with your loan officer. Find out what's going on, if there's any grants, any seminars, anything that can help you build your credit, make you a better and stronger buyer. Pay something off, uh, close a trade line, Whatever. The next thing you want to do, 
Create an Excel spreadsheet. List all the properties that do interest you, but they're only a seven on your list. They're not a 10 yet. What's gonna make them a 10? Do they need to add a seller's assist? Do they need to come down in price? Have your agent negotiate these terms to get your offer accepted. Viewing the property, do not get tunnel vision, okay? Have a plan. Make sure your agent knows that plan. We're gonna go upstairs first. If we go upstairs, what are the questions that we need to know? How old's the roof? Are there any stains on the ceiling that we need to watch for or ask why, what happened? Were there any remodeling done? Was there any damage done? Are the room sizes perfect for our furniture? Um, as you're going downstairs, ask the age of the HVAC. Living room, dining room, are they gonna meet your needs? Kitchen, are you really focused on a remodeled kitchen? The kitchen, is a functional? Is it going to do what you need it to do? And so forth with everything else, basement and outside. But have a routine when you do that and take notes. Just don't go through, oh, I can remember that. You're gonna go through three to five properties and you're not gonna go right home and write everything down. You're, you're gonna go do some errands and especially if you have kids, you're gonna be yelling at them. So you're gonna be distracted. Write everything down, take notes. Make sure your agent knows what questions to ask the seller or the listing agent in reference to your motivation to buy the property. Why are they looking to sell? Do they need a fast settlement date? Do they need a long settlement date? Do they, are they contracting a company to remove all their items to get rid of them? They're not taking them with them. Maybe you say, maybe you'll offer to say, hey, no, leave the furniture here if that helps you. Find out if there's anything that you can make the seller's life a little easier that you don't mind doing that would help get your offer accepted. And the biggest piece is have an open mind, okay? You're not buying a new construction house. When you go through that home inspection report, don't feel that it's a laundry list that, hey, I'm gonna ask for everything on here. This is not the market for that. Focus on the most important things, and if there are some little things, ask for a credit. Make the seller's life a little easier, and that's what's gonna help also get your deal accepted. And also focus on communication. Communication with your agent, your mortgage officer, and anybody who's reaching out to you. Check in with them at least once a week if you're not hearing from them. Well, I hope that helped for Tactic Tuesday. Check us out next week for, an for another uh, class. Talk to you later.